Hello again and welcome to our daily Bible reading. We're going to finish off the story of Ruth. I love this story. It's so, so, oh, so enchanting and it, it says so much about God and we see so much about uh, the qualities that Ruth had to be selected as one of the women to come into the lineage of Christ as well. Powerful. And we're going to be venturing into the Gospel of Mark. Let's pray. Father, today I pray that you would and just fill our hearts with tremendous joy. As we look at your word, may it inspire us that you are the God who sees. You're the God who notices people. And so I pray, Lord, that as we read this, we would be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, come with me now. Ruth chapter 3. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Is not Boaz our relative with whose young women you were? See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Wash, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your cloak, and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet, and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. And she replied, All that you say, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had commanded her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight the man was startled and turned over, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. And he said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first, in that you have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you ask, for all my fellow townsmen know that you are a worthy woman. And now it is true that I am a redeemer. Yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Remain tonight and in the morning. If he will redeem you, good, let him do it. But if he, will not, if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. Lie down until the morning. So she lay at his feet until the morning, but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, Let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he said, Bring the garment you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it, and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her. Then she went into the city, and when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, How did you fare, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, These six measures of barley he gave to me. For he said to me, You must not go back empty-handed to your mother-in-law. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. Chapter 4 Now Boaz had gone up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the Redeemer, of whom Boaz had spoken, came by. So Boaz said, Turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the Redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, Buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me that I may know, for there is no one besides you to redeem it, and I come after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, The day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. 
Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm a transaction, the one drew off his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the Redeemer said to Boaz, Buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Kilian and to Marlon. Also Ruth the Moabite, the widow of Marlon, I have bought to be my wife, to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house, like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act worthily in Ephrathah and be renowned in Bethlehem. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered Ram. Ram fathered Aminadab. Aminadab fathered Naashan. Naashan fathered Salmon. Salmon fathered Boaz. Boaz fathered Obed. Obed fathered Jesse. And Jesse fathered David. And there we have that small piece of lineage of Christ's lineage. And we see from that David was uh, the ancestor to David to uh, Jesus. So it's a again a beautiful picture of how God used this this almost hopeless event and brought great hope. There's um, some interesting things happening in in chapter three where uh, Naomi tells Ruth, "This is what you to do: find out where he's sleeping, lift up the doona, <laughs> the blanket." and lie at his feet and at about midnight he sensed someone was at his feet um if it was me it probably wouldn't have taken that long <laughs> anyway, he must have been tired and somehow he knew straight away the symbolic meaning of this act and it's a, a beautiful scene where he he treats her with incredible respect and kindness and the rest is history as they say he uh, became her husband, she became his wife, and, and it's just a wonderful story. The other side of this is that he was old, well older, he, because he remarks, you, you didn't go for a young man, you went for me. And, and it's the, uh, uh, again, I think it's grace and redemption for, for uh, Boaz as well, that God looked upon his circumstance. Although he was prosperous and he had material wealth, he, he didn't have the one thing that, that people often long for, and that's love in his life. And he got it with Ruth. Just absolutely magnificent. All right. Let's come now to Mark chapter 6. He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. 
And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour, except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marvelled because of their unbelief. And he went about the villages teaching. Uh, just a, I guess just a, a couple of things to note here. Jesus has gone back to Nazareth where he grew up. And if you look at a map, I'll, I'll just have a map on the screen there, you'll see that Nazareth is sort of inland. It's, it's not near the, it's about 30, 40 kilometers away from the Sea of Galilee. And this, and this event uh, we see in the other Gospels is where they took Jesus after ministering in, in the local synagogue. And they tried to throw him off a cliff, and he left. And we, we see from the other Gospels that he relocated, he, he moved his base of operations right to the north of the Sea of Galilee, a place called Capernaum, which is where Simon, uh, the, the fisherman, and, and uh, James and John lived. That's where they came from. So just to give you the geography here, because what we're seeing in Mark's Gospel in particular is he's grouping things geographically All right, let's continue chapter 6 verse 7 and he called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits he charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff no bread no bag no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics and he said to them whenever you enter a house stay there until you depart from there and if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others said, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother when his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. 
and he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups, by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish, and those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him. And were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. Wow, wow, wow. Again, we see Christ's lordship over not just sickness, not just death, not just uh, disease, but, but over nature, where he could walk on water. And of course, in the other Gospels, we see that it was Peter who beckoned uh, for Christ, or Christ beckoned for him to come. And so we see that Christ had power over all of these things. This is something that no Roman had. And of course, writing to the Romans, this would have been incredibly impressive. So what do we see here? We see that God gave hope to a woman who thought she had no hope, to an older man, Boaz, who thought he had no hope. God gave hope to each of these people who were sick. God gave hope to these poor outcasts and villagers who had no hope, no hope of medical assistance and all. And Christ gave them hope. It's just such a beautiful retelling of what Christ had done. With this in mind, I'm going to pray that God gives you hope, no matter what you're facing right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you for those who've joined with me in this daily Bible reading. And I pray for each one, no matter what they're going through, no matter what they're facing, no matter how hopeless it looks, that, Father, you would fill their hearts with faith and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this. If you haven't liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That way you get daily notifications. And there's a certain number of subscribers that once I hit that with this channel, then YouTube will actually promote it more um, widely. So help help me to get that, that number. I'm not sure what that number is. I'm not really that at up with it all, but I know that exists because my teenage daughter tells me. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for our next daily library.